Hi, this is Dave, Dave's Vintage Baseball Cards. Uh, as you may know, if you don't know, you know now, uh, we're one of the larger dealers in the uh, Topps Venezuelan Baseball Cards. And uh, I'm going to kind of have some pictures of the cards scrolling as I tell you a little bit about them and, uh, and how I got into it. Uh, back in 2000 at the Anaheim Convention, I met a family. Uh, they were from Venezuela. They were looking for cards for their uncle or cousin in Venezuela and I invited them to come by my shop. They came by, they bought a f some cards and they hooked me up with Enrique who was a card dealer down in Caracas. And over the years we uh, established a relationship uh, at first trading. I'd send him mantles and roots and this and that and he'd send me envelopes full of these uh, Venezuelan cards, uh, Mickey Mantle cards from down there, Nolan Ryan's, all kinds of Hall of Famers and stickers and other related items, uh, all kinds of stuff. So, so just to kind of get into the cards a little bit, um, here's a picture of 1959. Now, a lot of the a lot of the issues down in Venezuela, they they look at first at first glance they look almost identical to the North uh, American counterparts. Uh, these particular cards, the 59s, uh, some of them say made in USA, some of them say Impresso and Venezuela. Uh, one major difference, uh, the cards that were printed in Venezuela were printed more crudely. They were on thicker paper, lower quality paper. The cards had no uh, no sh sheen, so to speak, on, on the front. And that same, uh, same is the case with the 1960 cards. And here you can see... Uh, uh, Stremski and then uh, rival uh, rival All Stars. Uh, the sets were smaller. Also, there were um, 196 of the 1959s, 198 of the 1960s and 62s. Uh, then they went up to 370 uh, for 64 and 66 and 68. 67 is kind of a weird set. They had uh, 138 Winter League cards and followed by 150 uh, North American cards and and then they had uh, kind of a subset of retireds. In the 1962 cards, which you can see here, these cards actually are printed in Spanish on the back. And that Louis Aparicio, uh, card number 200 in this set, us usurps the Mickey Mantle, because in the North American set, Mickey Mantle was, was number 200, and Gaylord Perry was 199, but they switched it because Elio Chacon, a Venezuelan, and Louis Aparicio, a Venezuelan, they wanted them in the set. So they actually took images of those and superimposed them and kind of redid them. And when you find those cards, uh, they usually have white stuff off to the side of the borders. They're not centered very well. In fact, in some cases, uh, the grading companies don't even think they're real cards, but they are. Uh, the 1964s are different in that they have a black back. The front of the card is identical. The back, the numbering, everything is the same, but the back is in black. The 66s are very difficult to tell the difference because they look identical. They say made in USA, but uh, no gloss on the cards, and they're thicker uh, cardboard, slightly thicker. It's very hard to tell, but lower quality. And the orange on the back is a deeper shade of orange, whereas a North American counterpart is more like a uh, peach colored orange if you will. The 67s uh, have thin borders. Uh, the North American, uh, the Major League Baseball ones, they use the same images from the cards we had up here, but they have, they're smaller cards and they have very thin borders. Uh, and on the back uh, there's no stats so to speak. It's There's the stats in Spanish in a paragraph. There's a phrase uh, about each player uh, and then there's the uh, of course the minor the uh, winter league cards are with a lot of Venezuelan players and some North American players mixed in players from North America that went down and played down there uh, as well as uh, and then of course they're in Spanish also and the retired group there's 50 cards there and you have like Ted Williams Whitey Ford Sandy Koufax uh, you know, Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, uh, a lot of, you know, really popular players in there. 1968, uh, you're going to see several cards here, some nice Hall of Famers. They look identical to the North American cards, except on the bottom of the cards, they say Impresso in Venezuela. Uh, no, no, they don't say that. I'm sorry. They say Hencho. Hencho in Venezuela, Spanish for made in. Um, and, you know, they're 
once again, no gloss on these cards, a little lower quality, but uh, they look very nice. And, and it's very rare that you find these cards in a high grade. You're going to see a Nolan Ryan here, and I've blown up the back of it where you can see it says Hensho in Venezuela. It's a PSA 5. Uh, at the time I got that graded, there were only three fives. Uh, to my knowledge, there's still only three fives, and there are no sixes or anything higher. So this is as good as it gets. You don't find these things in high grade. Then we go to 1970 Ovenka. These were produced by Sport Grafico down there. It's a 300-card set. Uh, they had glossy cards, and they had flat cards. <clears throat> uh, they have... A subset at the back of it, which is their Immortals, uh, their superstars, so to speak. Uh, you've got uh, some of the uh, Venezuelan heroes who played up north, like uh, Vic Davileo and Louis Aparicio and his dad and Cesar Tovar and popular players like that. And there was also a different type of sports scenes. In 1972, you see a sticker here of uh, Nolan Ryan. Uh, these cards slash stickers are paper thin. Uh, they were almost always glued into albums and like this one when you get them you almost always have them with uh, some type of glue residue on the back. Uh, then you take a look at the um, at, at some of the Winter League stickers. Uh, 77 top stickers which had a Winter League set and then also down in Venezuela stickers that were not issued here. They were in 72, 73, 74, and 76. Uh, you're going to see a series of stickers of Winter League uh, players. And you have an awful lot of ball players. Uh, for example, you're going to see a Dave Parker in there from 1974. Well, his first top card wasn't until uh, 1975, so it's a pre-rookie. Uh, Ryan Sandberg had a card in there in the early 80s, um, a Winter League card. Maybe players like Don Baylor, a lot of the major league players, uh, after the after the season ended, they would go down and play ball in the winter in in South America. Uh, so those are really kind of neat. And uh, at the end, now what you're going to see now, I'm showing some of the cards, some of the 68s here, where you see glue surrounding the back of the card, and they were pasted in. And and once these cards got glued into the albums. Uh, and these aren't really even all that bad. In 64 and 66, you find them all the time where the backs are just completely torn off. Uh, it's very rare to find these cards in uh, any kind of decent condition here. So, uh, you know, and that's just, you know, par for the course. And then, of course, a lot of the time when they get peeled out, you know, they either parts would come off the back or they get creased when they're coming out. But you can go to our website, uh, you see the links down below scrolling across as we go through this presentation. And all these different years and all these different issues have their, their own page there. And most of them I've got scanned images of all the cards up there, uh, at least some of the more valuable ones. And you can take a look. Uh, if you're interested in these, uh, we still have them for sale. I highly doubt you have any that you want to try to sell to me because they're so difficult to get and we cannot get them anymore. Uh, for the last couple of years, Enrique has quit sending them to me. Uh, you know, with the eBay prices and some of these things going nuts, uh, the guys down there in Venezuela just don't want to get off the cards and, and sell them at any kind of a price where I can afford to buy them anymore. So uh, that's it for the Venezuelans. Uh, I hope this was informative for you. If you have any questions regarding them, go ahead and drop us a line, call us, or send us an email. All my information is up. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this show. So we'll see you soon at Dave's Vintage Baseball Cards. Bye-bye.